Did you know that there are fruits that look like they came straight out of a fairy tale? Today, we'll uncover the secrets of some of the strangest and most delicious varieties in the world. Are you brave enough to try flavors you've never imagined? Let's watch it, it's fascinating. Hala fruit. This has to be, without a doubt, one of the strangest fruits I've ever seen in my life, both in shape and color. Just look at it. If I didn't know it was real, I could easily think it was a prop from a movie about alien ecosystems. What we have here is the curious hala fruit, which comes from the Pandanus tectorius tree, commonly known as Pandanus. It's a tropical plant from the Pandanaceae family, native to the tropical regions of the Indo-Pacific, including countries like Indonesia, the Philippines, Malaysia, Australia, and the Pacific Islands. This fruit is anything but normal as it generates something known as compound fruit, meaning the fruit is actually hundreds of small fruits clustered together in a multiple structure. In this case, it grows like several phalanges around a core, and what you eat is the middle part of the phalange. Just look at how impressive the colors of these fruits can be. The exterior is usually green, but inside, there's a gradient of colors that goes from intense red to bright orange. According to those who have tasted it, it has a sweet flavor that seems like a mix of pineapple and mango, and its texture is very comparable to that of a mango, but perhaps a bit more fibrous. It makes you want to pull the fruits out of the core, doesn't it? Star Apple. This fruit deserves nothing less than a five-star rating, mainly because it has a star shape inside. I know, I know, that joke was terrible, but the fruit is quite good. This is the Star Apple, also known as the Caimito or Milk Apple. It's a tropical fruit native to the Caribbean and Central America, appreciated for its sweet pulp and, of course, its unique appearance, which reveals a star pattern when cut in cross-section. The Star Apple tree reaches heights of 33 to 66 feet, it has a straight trunk and a dense, rounded canopy. The leaves are alternate, oblong and dark green on top, while the underside is a shiny golden or silver color. As for the fruit itself, it is round or oval, measuring about two to four inches in diameter. The skin is smooth and leathery and ranges in color from green to deep purple, depending on the variety. The interior pulp is white, purple or translucent, with a gelatinous and smooth texture and its flavor is sweet and slightly acidic, which can be described as a mix of green apple and lychee. However, there are some varieties that are not acidic at all and have a caramel-like flavor. Would you try it? Gak. This fruit has such vivid colors and strange shapes that if I didn't know it was real, I'd think it was some kind of video game power-up. But no, it's as real as you or me. This is Gak, also known as Kwa Gooch or Gak Melon, Although it's one of those situations where the translation is a bit awkward, in Vietnamese, one way to say fruit is gach. So in several languages, it was poorly translated, and instead of calling the fruit by its name, they just called it gach. Anyway, it originates from Southeast Asia, especially Vietnam. It belongs to the cucurbitaceae family, which includes cucumbers and melons. The fruit is round or oval, measuring between four to five inches in diameter. It has a very rough outer skin covered with soft spines, green when unripe, and vibrant orange-red when mature. The fruit has a shiny red pulp layer called aril that wraps around the seeds, which is what is eaten. It has a mild flavor similar to melon, but is slightly sweeter. The outer skin is not consumed, but the pulp and seeds are used in various culinary and medicinal applications. The gak seeds are large, flat, and dark brown or black. They have a hard shell and are edible, but only after being cooked. In Southeast Asian cuisine, gay si is used to prepare a variety of dishes. In Vietnam, for example, sticky rice with gak, known as gzoi gak, is a traditional dish served at festivals and celebrations due to its bright red color, a symbol of good luck. It's also used in soups, desserts, juices, and smoothies. Due to its vibrant color and high content of carotenoids, such as lycopene and beta-carotene, it's used as a natural coloring agent in foods and cosmetics. Hey, if you've never seen this fruit before, make sure to give us a like and subscribe. Finger Lime. Did you know there's a type of citrus that has an appearance and even a texture comparable to caviar? Yes, that's right. Let me introduce you to Finger Limes, better known by the fancy name Citrus Caviar. With that name, it's easy to see why they've made their way into gourmet kitchens around the world. 
What we have here is a curious type of citrus, native to the tropical and subtropical forests of eastern Australia. In fact, it's one of the few fruits that originally only grew in Australia, although today there are crops of it in various parts of the world. These little wonders are quite distinct from what we know as citrus, as they are small and elongated, resembling a finger, hence their name. They range in length from 2 to 5 inches and have a thin skin that can be various colors, such as green, yellow, brown, and red. The most notable characteristic is their internal pulp, which consists of small, round, juicy vesicles known as citrus caviar pearls, due to their resemblance to caviar. When you bite into them, they burst in your mouth, releasing a tart and refreshing juice. So indeed, they work much like caviar. Finger limes are mainly used in fine dining and mixology due to their distinctive flavor and crunchy texture. They are perfect for garnishing seafood dishes, salads, sauces, and desserts, adding a touch of freshness and acidity. Additionally, they're used to give a unique visual and flavor touch in drinks and cocktails like margaritas, mojitos, and gin and tonics. They have that kind of texture that makes you want to take a bite just to see how they feel, don't you think? Red bananas. When I say the word banana, you probably picture just one kind, the typical large, yellow, long bananas that everyone eats and that you can easily find in supermarkets. Well, that banana you just imagined is called the Cavendish banana, and it's just a highly domesticated variety. But there are others, and they are quite strange, like these here. These are the Musa acuminata, better known as red bananas. They are a less common variety that comes from Malaysian species that are somewhat wilder than the type we're used to. They are characterized by their distinctive red or burgundy skin. Some even have a slight purple hue. Their taste is sweet like regular bananas, but much more complex and aromatic. They are also shorter and chunkier than typical yellow bananas, and their skin is thicker. The flesh inside is cream to light pink in color, with a soft and creamy texture. They have a sweet and slightly fruity flavor, with notes that some describe as a mix of raspberry and mango or a blend of tropical fruits. Although they are primarily grown in Southeast Asian countries, they are also produced in much of Latin America, the Caribbean, Africa, and some parts of Australia, mainly as a way to add some genetic diversity to regular bananas, which can be devastated by pests due to being produced through cloning. Initially, this variety was exotic and little known, but it has gained popularity over time. Who knows, they might replace regular bananas in a couple of decades. Buddha's Hand When I discovered that there was a fruit called Buddha's Hand, I thought it was a rather strange name. But now that I see it in front of me, I think I understand why it was given that name. Buddha's Hand is a type of citrus, so it's a cousin of oranges and lemons, although it's definitely the quirky relative of the family. It originates from Southeast Asia, particularly from regions like Vietnam and the more tropical parts of China. Surprisingly, it contains neither pulp nor juice like other common citrus fruits. Instead, it is made almost entirely of the thick, bright yellow rind when it's ripe. And that's exactly what makes it valuable, as unlike other citrus fruits, the rind of Buddha's hand is much less bitter and has a sweet citrus flavor along with a delicious and potent aroma. This aroma makes it useful for flavoring and scenting all kinds of recipes such as infusions, liqueurs, and candies. In traditional Chinese medicine and other herbal practices, it is used to treat a variety of ailments such as digestive issues, colds, and respiratory conditions, and it is believed to have anti-inflammatory and expectorant properties. In several Asian cultures, especially in China and Japan, Buddha's hand holds spiritual and symbolic significance, making it a symbol of good fortune prosperity, and longevity. In Buddhism, the fruit is viewed as a symbol of blessing due to its shape resembling Buddha's hands in prayer or blessing. For this reason, it is often used as an offering in temples and altars. Jabudakaba. I bet you've never seen fruit growing directly from the trunk of a tree before. And yes, at first glance, you might think this is one of those weird AI-generated images, but no, what we're looking at here is completely real. It's the curious Jabudakaba grapes. This tropical fruit is native to Brazil and some parts of Argentina and Paraguay, and it's known for its sweet flavor. But what really makes it special is the strange way it grows, directly on the trunk and main branches of the tree. This characteristic is quite unique to the Jabuticaba tree and is called cauliflory, although scientists aren't sure why this feature evolved. 
it might be an adaptation to produce many more fruits without the weight tipping the tree, which is somewhat weak. The fruit itself is round, measuring about 1 to 3 centimeters in diameter, with a thick dark skin that ranges from purple to almost black when ripe. Its flesh is juicy, colored white to pink, and contains 1 to 4 large seeds. The flavor is sweet and sour, similar to a grape, but with a firmer texture. Jabuticaba is consumed fresh, but it is also used to make juices, jams, jellies, and especially high-quality wines. Unfortunately, it has a very short shelf life after harvest, which makes it difficult to export to distant markets, so you'll hardly find it outside of Brazil in its fresh form. And it's more common to find it as wine or jelly. Kiwano. Have you ever seen those annoying pop-up ads promoting all sorts of weird things? including fruits that supposedly make you immune to the effects of aging? Well, this is one of the fruits they often feature, and now we're going to tell you the truth about it. It's the kiwano, also known as the African horned cucumber. This exotic fruit is native to Africa, specifically the semi-arid regions of Central and Southern Africa. Now, this is indeed a close relative of cucumbers and melons belonging to the cucurbitaceae family, but it has evolved a very different flavor profile and shape. It typically appears as an oval fruit with a bright yellow or orange skin covered in soft spikes resembling horns. When ripe, the flesh inside is bright green and has a gelatinous texture, with many edible seeds similar to those of cucumbers. Its flavor is a unique blend of cucumber, lemon, banana, and passion fruit, with a slightly sweet and tangy taste. So it's kind of like the cool, fun cousin of regular cucumbers. It's mainly consumed fresh, and to do so, it's cut in half and the flesh is scooped out with a spoon. The flesh, along with its seeds, is juicy and refreshing, making it ideal for warm climates. It is used in salads, salsas, and fruit dishes, and it's also popular in drinks like smoothies and cocktails, where it adds a refreshing flavor and interesting texture. Additionally, kiwano pulp can be used as a decorative garnish for seafood dishes and desserts. And just in case you were wondering, yes, it is a very nutritious fruit, but it certainly won't make you immortal or rejuvenate you in any way, so don't believe those ads. Pitaya. When you think of an exotic fruit, this is probably the image that comes to mind. It's definitely one of the strangest fruits of all, both in flavor and color, and even the plant it comes from is quite peculiar. This is the pitaya, also known as dragon fruit. This strange fruit comes from two types of cacti known as Hylocereus undatus, and Hylocereus megalanthus. The first is native to Mexico and Central America and produces pink or red fruits, while the second is found more in Northern South America and produces the yellow variety. The red variety is the hardest to find as the fruit is defended by several hard to remove spines, but it is highly prized for its intense and delicious flavor to the point that just five of these fruits can cost up to $22, which is quite a bit for a single fruit. The yellow variety is much easier to harvest since the cactus has fewer spines. They have a delicately mild flavor and are a delicacy, but be careful not to eat too much, as they are one of the strongest natural laxatives out there. Rambuton. I've seen hairy fruits before. For example, kiwi is quite hairy, not to mention peaches, but I've never seen a fruit with such an exaggerated and colorful hairstyle. It's like a fruit with a punk hairstyle. These strange and delicious fruits are rambutans, a tropical fruit native to Southeast Asia, particularly countries like Malaysia and Indonesia. Its name comes from the Malay word rambut, which means hair, referring to the hairy and spiny skin of the fruit. Its skin is thick, red and green in color, and covered with soft and flexible spikes that give it a strange appearance. When the skin is peeled away, it reveals a translucent white pulp, but be careful, as this surrounds an inedible seed. The flesh is very juicy and sweet with a slightly acidic flavor, commonly compared to lychee, although rambuton tends to have a firmer texture and a less floral taste. It is mainly consumed fresh, simply by peeling the skin and eating the flesh directly, making it a refreshing fruit that is popular in warm climates due to its juiciness and sweet flavor. Additionally, it is used in fruit salads, desserts, ice creams, and tropical drinks. It can also be canned or processed in syrup to preserve its freshness and flavor. And in some cultures, the seeds of the rambuton are dried and ground into flour, 
although consumption is limited due to certain bitter compounds. The fruit is a good source of vitamin C, which helps boost the immune system, making it an interesting alternative when you catch a cold and don't want to drink lemon tea. Originally, they only grew in Southeast Asia, but in the 2000s tens, they began to be cultivated in Latin America, and it was a tremendous success. Now countries like Chile and Colombia produce them in bulk, and you can even see people selling them on the street. In my humble opinion, they are delicious. Purple Akibi. Generally, you should avoid eating fruits with skins that break during ripening. However, this isn't the case with the purple akibi, as it naturally splits open while the fruit ripens. This unique fruit, also known as chocolate vine or five-leaf akibia, is a climbing plant native to East Asia, particularly in regions like Japan, China, and Korea. The plant is appreciated for both its ornamental appearance and its edible fruit, which is quite popular in some Asian cultures for its unique flavor and texture. The fruit is a long cylindrical pod that turns a striking purple when ripe. These pods can grow between three to six inches long and have a thick, soft skin. What's charming about these fruits is that when they ripen, their skin literally splits open, leaving no doubt about whether they are ready to eat. Inside the pod, you'll find white, gelatinous, translucent flesh with black seeds nestled within. The edible pulp has a mild, slightly sweet flavor and a smooth texture reminiscent of melon or pear. Interestingly, those who have tried it say that while the taste isn't identical, it does somewhat remind them of chocolate. The purple akibi is a hardy plant that can adapt to various climatic conditions, although it prefers temperate climates with warm, humid summers and mild winters. It thrives in well-drained soil and enjoys full sun or partial shade. Because of its climbing ability and rapid growth, it's ideal for covering pergolas, fences, and walls. However, it can be somewhat difficult to transplant to different soils, which is why it hasn't had much success outside of Asia. Cherimoya. One of the things I find fascinating about living in Latin America is that some of the most exotic fruits in the world are quite common to us since we share the same land where they grow. This is certainly true for the cherimoya, also known as chirimoya in some regions. This tropical fruit is native to the Andean valleys of Ecuador and Peru, although it is widely known throughout Latin America. It is prized for its sweet and creamy flavor, earning it the nickname ice cream fruit due to its soft, creamy flesh that resembles a dessert. It has an oval shape that sometimes resembles a heart with a green, scaly skin that turns light brown as it ripens. The skin is thin and typically covered in small bumps or scales but what you eat is the white, creamy interior flesh. However, this pulp is filled with inedible black seeds. Its taste is sweet and aromatic, with notes reminiscent of a mix of banana and pineapple, both of which are very popular fruits. It is usually consumed fresh and eaten with a spoon, making it somewhat like nature's ice cream. It's also used in various desserts, sorbets, ice creams, smoothies, and juices due to its perfect texture. Now, all Latin Americans united, if someone from abroad asks, we'll tell them it's the best fruit in the world and super expensive, that only the wealthiest people can afford it. Maybe then we can turn it into a gourmet fruit and sell it at completely outrageous prices in Europe. It's a brilliant plan, don't you think? Mangosteen. I bet you've never seen one of these strange fruits before. Well, that might not be true for Thais or Colombians, because when they're in season, you can see trucks filled with them everywhere. We're talking about the curious mangosteen, one of the most unusual tropical fruits out there, long crowned as the most delicious of them all, even earning the title of Queen of Fruits. It originates from Southeast Asia, especially countries like Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. It is small, round, with a thick, dark purple rind when ripe. The skin is quite peculiar. It's very hard on the outside, but spongy on the inside acting like a protective shell for the seeds and pulp. What you eat from this fruit is its juicy white flesh, which is divided into four to eight segments. These segments have a sweet, refreshing flavor with a citrusy touch, reminiscent of a mix of peach, pineapple, and other citrus fruits. The larger segments may contain seeds, which are not edible. Mangosteen is primarily consumed fresh due to its delicious taste. To eat it, simply break open the rind and extract the white flesh segments, avoiding the seeds. It's also used in some juices, but its biggest appeal lies in eating it fresh. The mangosteen is a tropical tree that thrives in warm, humid climates, 
and can grow up to 82 feet tall. It prefers well-drained soils rich in organic matter, but its cultivation is quite demanding, requiring specific temperature and humidity conditions, limiting its growth to certain tropical regions. Although it originates from Southeast Asia, its cultivation has spread significantly since it became popular, and today you can find it in other tropical regions like Central and South America. Miracle Fruit There are many fruits that boast magical flavors or wondrous properties. In most cases, these are just exaggerations. I know that soursop is the best fruit ever created, and I'm ready to fight anyone who disagrees, but claiming it's magical might be taking it too far. However, the game changes when we talk about these curious, seemingly simple red berries, as they truly have an extraordinary property. These are known as miracle fruits, or magical berries, although their real name is Sincepalum dulcificum. They are native to the tropical regions of West Africa and are quite small, measuring about two to three centimeters long. The skin of the berry is bright red when ripe, and the interior pulp is white and juicy with a slightly sweet, fruity flavor that's nothing out of the ordinary. Now, if it ended there, they wouldn't even earn a spot on this list. But believe me, these berries hold an unusual secret. They are packed with a protein called miraculin, found in the fruit's pulp, which has the ability to bind to taste receptors on the tongue and modify the perception of sour flavors, making them taste sweet for a period of time usually between 30 minutes to two hours after consuming the fruit. This means that after eating the miracle berry, you could take a bite of a lemon without any unpleasantness. In fact, those who have tried it report that miraculously, the lemon takes on a sweet and delicious flavor. West African tribes have used miracle fruit for centuries, primarily as a natural sweetener, but it is also used in rituals and ceremonies. Modern industries have attempted to use these super berries, but mass production hasn't been possible since the plant from which this marvelous fruit is extracted is quite rare and reproduces too slowly to cultivate in bulk. Monstera deliciosa. This is one of those fruits that at first glance you would never guess is edible. But indeed it is, to the point that its scientific name is Monstera deliciosa. What a show-off name. It's also known as Adam's rib, Swiss cheese plant, or simply Monstera. This tropical plant originates from the rainforests of Central America, stretching from Southern Mexico to Panama. It originally became popular as an ornamental house plant due to its large, shiny, perforated leaves, but it turns out its fruit is delicious. It resembles a cylindrical ear of corn covered in green hexagonal scales. The scales are the rind, and inside are small edible pulp balls. When fully ripe, it has a sweet flavor reminiscent of a mix of banana, pineapple, and mango. Some describe it as tasting like a piña colada. However, it's crucial to consume it only when it's ripe, as the unripe fruit contains calcium oxalate, which can cause irritation in the mouth and throat. Typically, people aren't aware that it produces edible fruits, given that the plant can live outside its jungle environment, but it usually doesn't reproduce when it's outside its habitat. So since it doesn't produce flowers or fruit, most people think it's just an ornamental plant. And there you have it, some of the rarest fruits in the world. Have you tried any of them? Let us know in the comments. Here are two options that you'll surely love. 